Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel or welcome back to my podcast if you are listening to this episode in the audio version only. My name is Rux, I'm a Western Tropical Astrologer and today we're going to be covering your October horoscopes. Now before we start talking astrology, I have a few things that I would like to mention. First and foremost, I'm a Western Tropical Astrologer, therefore all videos on my channel or all episodes on my podcast will follow Western Tropical Astrology. In my practice, I use the whole sign house system. And uh, if you want to work with me, if you want to book a reading, a consultation, you can find me on my website, which is writteninthestars-astrology.com. So that is writteninthestars-astrology.com. You can go to the services section and you can find the various types of readings or consultations that you can go for. Now, as you may have probably noticed, my voice is not at 100%. I am currently recovering, uh, well actually both my husband and I are currently recovering from the dreaded virus <laughs> and uh, this uh, horoscope is probably going to be a little bit shorter than usual. It's probably going to be a little bit more succinct. Please forgive me if I cough every now and then and um, bear with me if that uh, happens indeed. October, folks. Everyone's waiting for October because in October is when everyone and their mother goes out of retrograde. And I'm obviously referring to planets. We have four planets, four planets going direct in October. Pluto in Capricorn on the 6th of October, Saturn in Aquarius on the 10th, uh, Jupiter in Aquarius on the 18th, and Mercury in Libra on the 18th of October. So we can certainly expect things to start flowing a lot more smoothly after all of these uh, planets go out of uh, retrograde. Uh, certainly when I'm filming this, uh, there is um, this ongoing petrol crisis in the United Kingdom. I mean, uh, the transport secretary is saying that there is no crisis. Uh, it's been fabricated. Would you look at that? Uh, all sorts of mixed messages, just as uh, a Mercury retrograde is about to kick off. Um, we certainly also have um, the catastrophical situation with the volcano in La Palma ongoing. So there is quite a bit happening right now in the world. Other memorable astrological events taking place in October. We have a new moon in Libra on the 6th of October. Uh, we have Venus moving into Sagittarius on the 7th of October, finally getting out of Scorpio. We also have, let's see, a full moon in Aries on the 20th of October. The sun moves into Scorpio on the 23rd. And on the 30th of October, Mars also moves into Scorpio until the 13th of December. <laughs> So uh, without further ado, as I said, I'm going to try to keep it um, shorter than usual because uh, I don't want to uh, leave you uh, hanging when my voice goes, uh. Let's kick it all off with Aries, Aries sun and Aries rising. My lovely Aries, uh, for you, four planets are going direct, just like they are for everyone. Pluto is going direct in Capricorn in your 10th house of career on the 6th of October. Saturn is going direct in uh, Aquarius in your 11th house on the 10th of October. Jupiter is also going direct in this part of your chart um, in the 11th house uh, on the 18th of October. And Mercury is going um, direct in your 7th house of partnerships and committed relationships on the 18th of October. Certainly, <laughs> A planet moving out of retrograde, um, let's say, has a much stronger influence than something that is moving slowly, that is lagging behind. So there may be this feeling of breakthrough that you experience across the board in your house of career after Pluto goes out of retrograde, in your 11th house of long-term plans after both Saturn and Jupiter go out of retrograde here, and in your 7th house of 
partnerships and committed relationships. Once Mercury gets out of retrograde, it may feel like communication with partner, with your partners, uh, both uh, personal um, partners as well as business partners. Um, communication is going a lot, a lot better. But until we reach those stages, let's take the days as they come. The 1st of October is a tricky date. It's a tricky date for everyone because we have uh, Mercury squaring Pluto in uh, Capricorn in your 10th house. Essentially, this is um, a day when there can be power clashes, power clashes with authorities, power clashes with bosses, power clashes with possibly um, one of your committed partners, business-wise or um, a personal um, a partner, it may feel like you are possibly facing some sort of hidden information um, that is coming to the surface about this person's agenda. And it is um, obviously taking you by surprise on the one hand, and on the other hand, you may feel inclined to react quite violently verbally. My recommendation would be not to, certainly, because Mercury is retrograde at this time. You may feel this energy um, both in the days before uh, the 1st of October as well as on the 2nd, 3rd, but it's the most intense on the 1st of October. So a little bit of, uh, a little bit of caution in terms of how you address people, in terms of what you utter to others could take you a very, very long way because you do not want to burn a bridge when Mercury is retrograde. Just saying. On the 4th of October, um, Mercury is trining Jupiter in Aquarius in your 11th house of long-term goals, plans, and dreams. So this is when you may actually feel like um, someone from your past, maybe uh, someone who you collaborated with very successfully um, is uh, coming back into your life and saying, I can help you fulfill this uh, long-term goal of yours. Um, it is a fantastic day for communication with people from your past. Uh, it is a fantastic day to catch up with old friends. It is also a fantastic moment in time to agree with a partner on a long-term plan. On the 6th of October, we have a new moon in Libra in your seventh house. Um, it is exactly conjunct Mars. It is trining Saturn and Jupiter in, um, in your 11th house. It's widely trining both. Let me actually see what this new moon looks like. I will check the chart in a jiffy. Well, yes, certainly the new moon is happening at 13 degrees and uh, Saturn is at six degrees. Um, Jupiter is at 22 degrees of Aquarius. Uh, I mean, uh, you could call it an, uh, a sign uh, based uh, aspect. Also, also, uh, Mercury in your seventh house is going to be trining Jupiter in your eleventh house, and uh, Venus in Scorpio in your eighth house will form a separating square with Pluto in the tenth house of career. Okay, so it's a new beginning that is coming up for you partnership wise around the sixth of October, Aries, give or take three days before, three days um, after. But at the same time, it feels like a new beginning on old terms, or um, it feels like a new chapter with someone who you may have been either in a relationship with or in a uh, business partnership with. It's like now you feel possibly ready to make things happen for both of you. It may feel like, okay, um, the timing wasn't right in the past. Uh, maybe we didn't have enough uh, energy, enough resources, enough time available to make things uh, to make things work. I would say that this partnership is very motivating for you, my dear Aries, because it is exactly conjunct Mars. Also, something that your partner does around this time might make you decide. Yes, this is my person. Yes, this is someone who I can be with in the long run. Um, yes, I want to make things happen with this person for um, for good. It's like they get you now, if that uh, if that makes sense. It may also feel like all of a sudden, you've got to move really fast if you want to secure this partnership. 
because otherwise you might lose your very last shot, uh, my dear Aries. Uh, certainly for those of you who are single, uh, this can be a time when you reconnect with someone from your past and right now it feels like you've got uh, just the right amount of chemistry that is, uh, that is uh, needed to make things click. I'm liking it from a romantic perspective. On the 7th of October, Venus moves into Sagittarius in your ninth house until the 5th of November. Um, this is a fabulous time, um, my dear Aries, to be planning travels. Um, it is also a fantastic time to plan what you're going to do in terms of higher education, to maybe have a think about what it is that you want to study, to maybe have a think about um, how you are, let's say, planning to expand how you're planning to broaden your horizons. Uh, it is also fantastic to have Venus in your corner from a legal and judicial perspective until the 5th of November. If you need to apply for visas, residency, passports, etc., this is your time to do so. Um, on the 8th of October, we have a Sun-Mars conjunction in Libra in your seventh house. This can be a little bit of an explosive day um, when it comes to uh, partnerships and uh, committed relationships. The best way to use this energy is by uh, either working out together or by having sex. Otherwise, it can literally lead to an explosion. It can lead to a conflict. I like the following days. I like the 13th of October uh, for you, my dear Aries, because Venus is sextiling um, Saturn in Aquarius in your 11th house, uh, essentially uh, helping you put into practice maybe one of your long-term plans, um, possibly connected with uh, a different culture, possibly connected with studies. I also like the 15th of October uh, because the Sun in Libra is trining Jupiter in Aquarius in the 11th house. It is a beautiful, beautiful day uh, to present things to the outside world to maybe hold a presentation, um, to uh, uh, maybe launch something marketing-wise, um, or to um, essentially promote something to a wider audience. I also like the 19th of October because Mars and Libra in the seventh house is trining Jupiter and Aquarius in the 11th house. Uh, so this could be a time maybe when your partner is organizing something uh, for you along with your friends. On the 20th of October, give or take three days before three days after, we have a full moon in Aries in your first house. It is a tricky one. Uh, why? Because the sun is um, conjunct Mars in your seventh house and it is forming a T-square uh, with the moon in Aries in your first house and Pluto in Capricorn in the tenth house. Um, this has a big clash with bosses written all over it. It also has written all over it. I've had enough. I'm done. I am ready to move away from um, let's say, a situation that is no longer uh, working for me uh, in terms of uh, career, you could be feeling motivated, uh, let's say, to um, <laughs> throw the papers <laughs> into someone's face. Um, it can also feel like a, it can feel like a time when you really have to compromise on your let's say, approach on your um, direction um, if you want to continue working together with someone professionally. Now, I like the fact that the full moon um, is nicely aspecting Jupiter and Aquarius in the 11th house. My recommendation at this at this point in time, um, also Venus and Sagittarius is sextiling Mercury and Libra in the seventh house. My recommendation at this time is rather than allowing yourself to get carried away um, by anger and frustration or rather than allowing um, someone else's anger and frustration to trigger you, think about your bigger picture. Think about what you want to accomplish together. Think about whether um, maintaining positive relationships with uh, someone um, is likely to result in you fulfilling one of your long-term goals and objectives. Be strategic, Aries. Don't throw the baby out with uh, the bathwater. I think that's what they say. Um, also, also, it looks like justice is on your side. So maybe it is a matter of you being the bigger person and saying, okay, what does 
Um, what do the rules say? What does the letter of the law say? Um, if you're having a face off with someone, it can also be a time when you legalize a partnership. Um, but you are almost, let's say expecting to encounter opposition from the outside world. And you probably will encounter opposition from the outside world. Let's, let's just put it out there. Um, the sun moves into Scorpio um, on the 23rd of October, and um, on the 30th of October, Mars moves into Scorpio until the 13th of December. So you could say that uh, from the 23rd of October, your focus shifts away from trying to negotiate a partnership. It shifts to um, how you're going to navigate my values versus your values, how you're going to navigate um, the fact that you need to share resources, how you're going to navigate the fact that you might have different agendas uh, financially. And that is probably something that you are going to have to deal with for at least a month. I would give it longer. I would give it until roughly the middle of December when Mars gets out of this part of your chart, my, uh, my dear Aries. Now, if you are a Taurus sun or a Taurus rising, uh, four planets are going direct uh, in October, my lovely Taurians. Uh, Pluto and Capricorn in your ninth house on the 6th of October. So after the 6th of October, expect things to flow a little bit more smoothly um, when it comes to uh, legal matters, when it comes to traveling, when it comes to maybe getting a visa, getting your residency, etc. Saturn and Jupiter go out of retrograde. Uh, Saturn um, on the 10th of October and Jupiter um, on the 18th of October, both in your 10th house of career. If things have been moving quite slow professionally, career-wise, I would say once both of these planets are out of retrograde, then certainly it may feel like you know where you're headed. It may feel like you know where you are going. And Mercury is going out of retrograde in your sixth house of day-to-day -day work on the 18th of October. So certainly after the 18th, um, also um, challenges in terms of communication with colleagues, challenges in terms of um, um, having to go over old projects at work, uh, these seem to be also dissolving out of your experience. Also, after the 18th of October, um, you may feel a lot more positive and optimistic about um, something that you may have uh, dealt with health-wise, at least in the past three weeks. Now, let's go to the very beginning of October. On the 1st of October, we have a square between Mercury in the 6th house and Pluto in the 9th house. Um, this can be a clash at work uh, over uh, rules, over um, a certain legal aspect, um, over what is right or wrong, what is mor morally right or wrong uh, with a colleague. Um, on the 4th of October, um, we have a harmonious aspect between Mercury in your 6th house and Jupiter in the 10th house of career. So it can be like finally you're reaching maybe some sort of agreement with, um, with the boss, with someone in a position of power. Um, it may also feel like um, you are pulling towards you, you're drawing towards you, uh, the right kind of people to make um, a greater job, a bigger job happen at work. It does seem to be a team effort. On the 6th of October, give or take three days before or three days after Taurus, you have a new moon in Libra in your sixth house of day-to-day -day work. Uh, it is conjunct Mars and um, it is trining both Saturn and Jupiter in your, um, in your 10th house. They are both wide trines, by the way. <laughs> I've written in my notes. Um, Mercury in your sixth house continues to trine Jupiter in the 10th and um, Venus in Scorpio uh, in the seventh house is uh, forming a separating square with Pluto in the ninth house. Um, it's a new chapter for you um, in terms of day-to-day -day work, my dear Taurus. Uh, some of you uh, may be kicking off a new job. Some of you might uh, be welcoming a new team member. Uh, some of you might be starting off a new, um, let's say, work project, um, something that requires a great deal of energy to be spent, something that really is asking you to um, 
exert yourselves it is also probably asking you to take the lead since the new moon is conjunct mars i like the fact that mercury is uh, trading jupiter in your 10th house of career because essentially this work related project it can be something that comes back from the past and it's uh, it's knocking at your door and saying now is the perfect time to, for you to take care of this uh, it looks like this work project um, will have a positive impact upon your professional status and your professional path over time it's something that you can really add to your cv um, on the 7th of october until the 5th of November, Venus moves through Sagittarius in your 8th house. Uh, this is a fantastic time to um, apply for mortgages, to apply for loans. It can also be a time when you feel like people are more inclined to give you gifts. Uh, it is also generally a time of um, enjoyment in terms of intimacy when Venus goes through the 8th house. Now... The 8th and the 9th of October are a little bit trickier because the Sun is uh, conjunct Mars and Mercury is also conjunct Mars in your 6th house. So you may have possibly some conflicts with, uh, with co-workers. Uh, you might want to move fast and people are slowing you down. So um, patience is of the essence. Um, also, a very good day is the 13th of October. Uh, Venus in Sagittarius uh, is sex selling Saturn in Aquarius in your 10th um, house. Um, you are uh, overcoming some sort of crisis at work uh, or you are proving yourself to a boss in times of crisis at work work. I love the 15th of October as the sun in Libra is training Jupiter in Aquarius in your 10th house. Another big win um, work-wise, that's how I can call it. Um, it is also a time of uh, you feeling better physically if you haven't been feeling uh, too well physically. Um, the sun is connected with a sense of vitality. I don't really like the 17th of October as uh, the Sun in Libra is going to square Pluto and Capricorn in the 9th. So this can be a bit of an ego clash, a power clash, again with a co-worker. Um, on the 20th of October, we have a full moon in Aries triggering your 12th house, uh, 6th house axis. I would also look at the three days before, three days after. The Sun is conjunct Mars in your sixth house at the time, and it is forming a T-square with uh, the moon in Aries in the 12th house of the shadows of isolation of introspection and Pluto in Capricorn in the ninth house. Um, I would uh, recommend a lot of caution health wise from the 17th onwards, my dear, um, my dear Taurus. <sighs> Essentially, what could happen is you might burn yourself out you might push yourself too hard uh, or you might feel like you are fully uh, recuperated if you've been suffering of something health wise and you might be like yes business as usual i'm just gonna go back to doing what i was uh, always doing and all of a sudden you realize bam you have uh, let's say another uh, poorly uh, kind of a period or um you i don't know faint uh, or you feel dizzy and you realize I can't keep on doing what I used to be doing on a day-to-day -day basis. I need to give myself a bit more time to recover or I need to pay attention to um, a health-related symptom that maybe I did not take into account up until this point. It can also be a time when something ends very, very abruptly at work, my dear Taurus. Maybe a way of working. Um, maybe your routine gets thrown uh, up in the air. Maybe... Um, a colleague that you were relying upon leaves, a team member that you were relying upon leaves, and it feels um, it feels like a bit of a betrayal, I would say. Remember that it's not personal, and remember that uh, stress only makes you feel even worse in times like this. Um, the full moon is nicely aspecting Jupiter and Aquarius in your 10th house, so there is, let's say, um, a possibility for you to step up if someone does leave. There is a possibility for you to um, negotiate um, in a very positive manner with your boss and say, okay, if I take some of their responsibilities, will I get paid more? Will I get a new job title? So there is a way to transform this into an opportunity. 
Um, if something happens in terms of your work security, do not be afraid because it looks like you've already got something waiting for you or something awaiting you to apply for it um, in terms of your next opportunity. And it may be something that is better paid and it may also be something that um, is, uh, let's say, uh, more prestigious in terms of job title. On the 23rd of October, the sun moves into Scorpio in your seventh house, essentially illuminating your house of uh, partnerships and marriage and committed relationships uh, for a month. And on the 30th of October, Mars also moves in this part of your chart uh, in, in Scorpio until the middle of December. Um, essentially, um, let's say hyper activating your, um, your seventh house of partnerships, um, until the middle of December, uh, making you feel like things are probably moving really fast, really quickly. There can be all sorts of like, uh, sudden reactions from a partner, um, as, as Mars moves into, uh, moves through your seventh house. Um, it may also feel like your partner is having a little bit of a revolt. Uh, or they're having a little bit of a go at you. Um, if uh, if that is the case, uh, from the thirtieth from the thirtieth of October until um, the thirteenth of December, I would certainly recommend that uh, you don't take it personally, first of all, and uh, secondly, that you ask whether this is something that they have been holding on to for quite some time. Now, if you are a Gemini sun or a Gemini rising, uh, for you, my dear Geminis, um, four planets are gonna go direct in October, just like for everyone else, but let me tell you which um, houses in your natal chart will become um, decongested as a result of this. So uh, on the 6th of October, Pluto in Capricorn in your eighth house goes direct, essentially allowing you to feel like you are making headway in terms of solving a crisis in your life. Um, it may even feel like a little bit of a breakthrough, um, what you're experiencing in this, uh, in this part of your um, life after Pluto goes direct. Uh, it may also bring new information to the surface that allows you to overcome this challenge in your life a lot easier. On the 10th of October, uh, Saturn goes direct in Aquarius in your ninth house and Jupiter also goes direct in this part of your chart on the 18th of October. Um, essentially, if you have been trying to finalize something of a uh, legal nature, if you have had uh, some sort of um, uh, legal or travel related objectives this year, it may feel like things are finally happening after both of these planets go out of retrograde. And Mercury goes out of retrograde in Libra in your fifth house on the 18th of October. If there has been an experience of, of things uh, slowing down uh, in terms of uh, creativity, in terms of inspiration for you, then uh, worry not. Uh, things will return back to normal after the 18th of October. If you've been catching with a lot of old friends, let's say, and having fun and enjoying yourselves um, throughout the Mercury retrograde, well, what can I say? Mercury is going out of retrograde on the 18th of October. It's business as usual, once again, uh, folks. Now, on the 1st of October, and also on the 2nd, I would say, uh, there's a tense aspect between Mercury um, in uh, Libra, squaring Pluto and Capricorn in your 8th house. There can be, uh, let's say, um, some sort of... Uh, explosive conversation that you have with a romantic partner about shared resources. For instance, um, if you have children, there may also be maybe some sort of instance of you finding out some not so great news about your child's education or about something that was maybe kept away from you. That is likely to make you quite upset, I would say, uh, Gemini's. Now, uh, on the 4th of October, we have a trine between Mercury and Jupiter in the ninth house. So if there was anything that um, made you feel anxious or concerned about uh, the education of your child, then things seem to be solving themselves uh, around the 4th. On the 6th of October, give or take three days before, three days after, we have a new moon in Libra in your fifth house. Uh, it is exactly conjunct Mars. Um, we have Mercury in your fifth house trining Jupiter in the ninth house. And um, Venus and Scorpio in your sixth house is uh, in a separating square with Pluto in the eighth. So what's going on 
here, my dear uh, Geminis. Certainly, uh, new moons bring with them a symbolic new beginning. Um, this one is the conjunct Mars. Uh, Mars rules your 11th house and your 6th house. Um, essentially, it may feel like you can finally make plans for the future um, regarding a uh, creative project. Uh, it can certainly feel like all the work that you have been putting into a creative project is leading somewhere and is being recognized. Um, it may also be a time when you receive all of a sudden an opportunity to collaborate with a friend, maybe because Mars rules your 11th house on some sort of creative project. Maybe that was um, left off somewhere in your past. It's something that you may have worked on, but it didn't pick up. So now, boom. Uh, now is the time when it comes back to your attention and it could be something that you work on for the next six months. Um, for those of you who are single, it can bring a new beginning romantically, but also a new beginning that um, um, involves someone from your past in one form or another because Mercury at this time is still retrograde. And it could be a new beginning romantically with someone who you consider a friend. Now, on the 7th of October until the 5th of November, Venus uh, moves through Sagittarius in your 7th house. This is prime time romantically for you, my dear Geminis. Um, consider yourselves, um, let's say, um, cosmically supported uh, to go out, to commit, to um, fall in love, uh, to uh, make plans for the future um, relationship-wise. Um, to allow yourself to have fun because Venus rules your fifth house of fun together with a romantic partner. This is romantic bliss for you. Uh, there can also be some super positive developments in the life of an existing partner. If you are already with someone that essentially uh, makes you feel like you are in the ideal relationship, my dear Gemini's. Um, we have a conjunction between uh, Sun and Mars in Libra in your fifth house and a conjunction between Mercury and Mars in Libra in your fifth house on the 8th and 9th of October. So both days are quite explosive. I mean, it's, uh, it's a great energy to, um, let's say, um, get all passionate with someone. Um, it can also be a time when you have maybe fights or quarrels with the collaborators over a creative project. I like the 13th of October when Venus is sextiling Saturn in Aquarius in the ninth house. This could be a time when you make plans to travel with a partner. I also like the 15th when the sun is training Jupiter in Aquarius in your ninth house. Um, again, fantastic for traveling together with a partner. Um, also really good for um, promoting to the outside world, maybe through a marketing campaign, some of your uh, creative endeavors. On the 20th of October, we have a full moon in Aries in your 11th house, triggering your 11th, 5th house um, axis, give or take three days before, three days after. This one is a bit tense because the sun in Libra is conjunct um, Mars in Libra uh, in your 5th house, and it is forming a T-square with the moon in Aries in the 11th and Pluto in Capricorn in the 8th. Um, you may have felt like you had it in the bag, one of your long-term plans uh, with, with a romantic partner. You may have felt like, yes, this is done and dusted. Let's get excited about it. Woohoo! And um, there could be a Plutonian, which means buried, aspect coming to the surface around the 20th of October that essentially throws a spanner in your works. Um, this could also be a time when you reveal to the outside world, uh, maybe to your friends, to your groups of people that, uh, that you're active in, uh, you reveal something explosive and something that you kept buried and hidden about your romantic life. I want to warn you, Gemini's, some of you might have children around this time, might hear news of, uh, of uh, pregnancy. Uh, it could also bring a sudden end to a creative uh, project uh, due to uh, financial issues, my dear Geminis. On the 23rd of October, the sun moves into Scorpio in your sixth house, essentially illuminating your house of day-to-day -day work for the next month. And on the 30th of October, Mars activates also your sixth house until the 13th of December. It is making you super busy, I wanna warn you. And it is also making you, um, 
let's say, ready to tackle any sort of health-related issues that you might have, but it could also bring inflammation in the body when Mars goes through the sixth house. If there is anything that you know uh, you need to treat or anything that you know needs your attention health-wise, I would get on it ASAP because you do not want a Mars inflammation to make it painful so that you treat it when the bubble has burst. Treat it before. And that is Gemini. Now, if you are a Cancer Sun or a Cancer or rising like yours truly here, four planets, four planets go direct Cancerians uh, in October. Pluto and Capricorn in your seventh house on the 6th of October. Um, finally, finally, it feels like maybe we're a little bit stuck in a rut with a uh, with a uh, partnership, with uh, where a relationship was headed, where it was going. Um, right now, it feels like, okay, this is the direction that we are headed into. When I say now, I mean after the 6th of October. Uh, Saturn and Aquarius in your 8th house and uh, Jupiter and Aquarius in your 8th house. Uh, Saturn on the 10th of October and Jupiter on the 18th. Uh, both are going out of retrograde. Can I just say about freaking time <laughs> things might have been a little bit slow in terms of investments for you in terms of return on investments uh, they may have been also a little bit slow in you feeling like you are making progress in dealing maybe with some sort of personal crisis um, also with maybe uh, some of your let's say hidden demons uh, or um, something that you prefer to keep away from prying eyes both Saturn and Jupiter are saying yes You've done the work, you've gone over the issue over and over and over again, and you've dug deep, and now it is time for you to feel like it's all been for something. Um, if you have been waiting to hear news about, let's say, uh, mortgages, loans, um, um, lump sums of money from other people, <laughs> you may very well hear news after both of these planets go out of retrograde. And Mercury goes out of retrograde in your fourth house on the 18th of October. Uh, I gotta tell you, Mercury retrograde in my fourth house has already uh, had me um, at home in my uh, home country more than I actually intended to because guess what? The virus caught us home. And we had to stay at home uh, more than we actually intended to. Um, it may also feel like a uh, weight is being lifted off your, your, your chest. Uh, maybe, possibly, uh, when it came to uh, the relationship with one of your family members. Um, also, uh, Mercury going out of retrograde might uh, contribute in a beneficial manner when it comes to you maybe selling or buying uh, home-related, uh, let's say, uh, articles, <laughs> objects, uh, um, furniture, for instance, or maybe selling or buying property. A very tricky day is the 1st of October, Cancerians, because we have a square between Mercury and Libra in your 4th house and Pluto and Capricorn in the 7th. There could be some fight, verbal fight, uh, with a family member um, over their relationship or over your relationship. There could also be a fight uh, about something that's going on in the home with your partner, uh, Mercury rules your third house, um, it could be a fight over a sibling, or it could be a fight over the car, for instance. Um, remember that Mercury is retrograde, so uh, it is obviously not worth uh, burning uh, bridges when Mercury is retrograde, because there will be elements coming to the surface, um, probably after Mercury is, is out of retrograde, um, that um, help you solve the issue um, in, uh, in a much more civilized manner. I like the 4th of October because Mercury in Libra is training Jupiter in Aquarius in the 8th house. Uh, it looks like if you were in need of some sort of lump sum of money to buy something for the home, you are getting it. Um, it is also a positive time, uh, maybe, um, in terms of um, solving a crisis at home. 6th of October, give or take three days before, three days after Cancerians. We have a new moon in Libra in your fourth house. It is conjunct Mars. Um, it is uh, widely trining Saturn and Jupiter. Mercury is trining Jupiter in your eighth house at this point in time. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, Mars rules your 10th house and your fifth house. Okay, so this could be a time when you either decide to move into a new home uh, or when you um, have, uh, let's say, 
this feeling of of your home life not not looking the same any longer after the news that uh, come up around the 6th of uh, of October uh, it may be um, news connected with children children in your uh, children in your family um, it could also be news connected with uh, one of the parents This could be a time also when if you're looking for a buyer for the home or if you are looking to purchase a home, you may feel like you have found the perfect property very suddenly, very unexpectedly, my dear uh, Cancerians. I would be very, very careful around this time if you are purchasing anything. I would be very careful with the electrics. I would be very careful with all things mars related with uh fire also uh, i would also be very careful to double triple check the wires uh cables whatever they're called um uh, certainly because mercury is re retrograde also because the new moon is in conjunction with mars something might blow up uh in uh, in the home uh, or there could be some sort of explosive news that a family member has for you around this time and it impacts everyone in in the family um, on the 7th of October until the 5th of November, Venus moves through Sagittarius in your 6th house. This is a fantastic, fantastic time for you work-wise. It is a beautiful time to collaborate with others work-wise. Uh, it is a time when you feel lucky and privileged and blessed to do the work that you are doing. Um, it may also feel like the best time for you to invest in your health, but also in what makes you feel physically good. Um, careful on the 8th and the 9th of October because we have both the Sun and Mercury in conjunction to Mars and Libra in the fourth house. Again, this could be another time when something um, blows up or when you burn yourself or when you cut yourself. And I'm not saying that you have to, but what I am saying, someone could do all of these things. Um, so careful with fire on these days literally careful with fire. Um, I like the 13th of October and the 15th of October. On the 13th, Venus is <laughs> sextiling Saturn in Aquarius in your eighth house. And um, this can be a time when you feel um, like you have accomplished something health-wise that is also having a positive effect upon your psyche. Um, and on the 15th, the Sun in Libra is trining Jupiter in Aquarius in your 8th house. Uh, you could be feeling lucky to have uh, a member in your family help you financially at this time. Um, you could also be feeling like things are finally coming into the right place uh, in terms of Again, maybe you securing a mortgage or you uh, finding a new property. Careful on the 17th of October, uh, Cancerians, because the Sun in Libra is squaring Pluto and Capricorn in the seventh house. And uh, the Sun rules your second house of income, so there can be a face off, there can be a clash uh, with a partner uh, as a result of maybe different opinions in terms of what you should be doing with your money. On the 20th of October, give or take three days before, three days after, we have a full moon in Aries in your 10th house. It's a tense one because the sun in Libra um, is conjunct Mars in your fourth house of home. Um, it is forming a T-square with the moon in Aries and Pluto in Capricorn in your seventh house. So um, I would say something is coming to a close uh, in terms of well, in terms of your home life, but also in terms of your um, status and reputation in um, in the world, um, there could be something that uh, has happened for you at home that determines you to reevaluate uh, what you're going to be doing moving forward, uh, career-wise. Uh, there can also be there can also be this feeling of having maybe to choose between one of your long-term career objectives and your next big step. Uh, home-wise and uh, family-wise. There's also a possibility that uh, your partner, if you are in a relationship, uh, might have some challenges in their own family, maybe with a parent. I really want you to maybe warn everyone in your family in the days prior to the full moon to um, move slowly and carefully and to not exhaust themselves and to not stress themselves out. Um, there is this sense of 
stress and maybe even physical danger that could be looming um, around you. So take it easy, take it slow, don't rush anywhere. Um, it could also be a time when you have an explosive, uh, let's say, announcement to make to the outside world about what's happening in your home and family life. Um, there is this feeling of something sudden coming into your attention. Um, some of you could be leaving a job around this time. Um, some of you could hear that, uh, for instance, your partner is getting another job someplace else. And if you want to continue to be with them, I don't know, you have to relocate as well. And you have to ask your boss for flexible working or something of that nature. From the 23rd of October, the sun moves into Scorpio in your fifth house um, for the next uh, four weeks, essentially illuminating your area of creativity, children, and romantic love. And from the 30th of October, Mars moves into this part of your chart until the 13th of December, giving you a great deal of energy to create, a great deal of energy to uh, enjoy life, to have fun, to move. Um, Mars rules your 10th house, so if you are thinking of creating something for your career, um, from the 30th of October until the middle of December, until the 13th, uh, it looks like you are going to have the energy to do so, my dear uh, Cancerians. That is October for you. My dear Leos, Leo suns and Leo risings. In October, four planets go direct. Pluto and Capricorn in your sixth house on the 6th of October. So essentially making things a little bit easier, a little bit smoother, a little bit more productive for you work-wise because things have been quite slow. Saturn in Aquarius in your seventh house on the 10th of October and Jupiter in the same part of your chart on the 18th of October. If you've been feeling like um, a relationship wasn't really going where you intended it to go, then um, you can blame the planets, you can blame Saturn, you can blame Jupiter. No, I, I take that back. I do not condone blaming anyone else. <laughs> um, there may have been a feeling of... Um, let's say, not knowing exactly how you are going to um, maybe deal with a committed relationship in the long run. Uh, maybe you felt like you weren't necessarily on the same wavelength with a partner in terms of uh, mentalities in terms of values in terms of um, in terms of belief system but once both of these planets go direct i would say uh, it is likely to feel like you can find a solution together um, it is likely to feel like your um, joint efforts are leading some where and mercury goes out of retrograde in libra on the 18th of october in your third house until then until the 18th of october my dear leos i'm sorry but you're probably going to experience delays on the road um maybe sometimes issues with your car <laughs> issues with transportation um you may feel like you have uh, pulled the um short end of the stick uh, in terms of having to deal with bureaucracy, paperwork, um, uh, missed uh, couriers, missed deliveries, uh, late deliveries. Uh, ensure that you triple check and read every single message that goes out of your um, email because if you don't triple check then it might land into someone else's inbox or, or it might be full of typos I don't know what's worse. <laughs> I suppose you have the answer to that. Um, the first couple of days of uh, October, the first and the second are a little bit tense with Mercury and Libra in your third house, squaring Pluto and Capricorn in your sixth house. Um, this can bring um, a, a certain hidden conflict or uh, something that was looming behind the scenes um, in terms of disagreement to the surface between you and a co-worker. It can also bring um, a sudden acutization of an issue that uh, you've been having health-wise and maybe you forgot about it, maybe you weren't really thinking about it and all of a sudden it re... 
emerges it comes back to your attention i wouldn't say it's something that's gonna last it may actually solve itself quite nicely um, after the fourth of october when mercury is trining um, jupiter um, whatever it is be it a health related issue be it a miscommunication or a misalignment with a co-worker remember that mercury is retrograde so you don't want to be saying things that you then want to take back because you might want to take them back. Very careful how you how you word things. On the 6th of October, you have a new moon in Libra in your third house, three days before, three days after as well. Uh, conjunct Mars. Let's see. Mars for you rules your ninth house and your fourth house. And we have at the time of the new moon, Mercury uh, trining Jupiter in the seventh house. Okay, so uh, this to me brings good news, this new moon. It can be, um, let's say, good news connected with maybe buying a new uh, car. It could be good news connected with uh, a sibling. It could also be um, you finally enrolling uh, on that course that you've been meaning to, to uh, join for quite some time. And maybe your partner has been like, do it, do it, it's now or never. Or maybe you are supporting your partner to enroll upon a certain course and you are saying, if you don't do it now, then when are you going to do it? It's never the perfect, um, it's never the perfect time. Um, it can feel like a new chapter uh, is uh, kicking off for you um, in terms of communication, my uh, my dear Leos, uh, especially when it comes to communication with a partner. I like what that looks like. Um, it can also be a chapter that makes you look differently at how you communicate with family members since Mars is also the ruler of your fourth house of home, my, uh, my dear Leos. Uh, it could also be a time when you decide to take a different stance, a different approach uh, when it comes to how you interact with others uh, from a communicational standpoint. On the 7th of October until the 5th of November, Venus moves through Sagittarius in your fifth house. Okay, it is fun time, uh, my dear Leos. It is a time to uh, go out. It is a time to prioritize fun. It is a time to prioritize play. It is a very romantic time. Uh, if you're single, it is certainly a time to go out, to date, um, to um, experiment, to enjoy the adventurous side of, uh, of love, uh, because you are not going to have Venus uh, back in this part of your chart this year, Leos. So make the most of it. Um, <laughs> We have two tricky days on the, on the uh, 8th and the 9th. Uh, the Sun and Mercury and Libra in your third house are conjunct Mars. I mean, something could break down in the middle of the road, or um, you could have a heated debate with a colleague at work. Um, I like the 13th and the 15th of October. Uh, on the 13th, Venus is sextiling Saturn in your in your uh, seventh house. And on the 15th, uh, the sun is trining Jupiter in your seventh house. Both of these days are great for dates. They are great for um, really connecting uh, deeply with um, a partner, uh, really connecting on an intellectual level and also uh, discussing about feelings uh, in a very kind of like deep uh, way. On the 20th of October, give or take three days before, three days after, we have a full moon in Aries in your ninth house. It's triggering the third house, ninth house axis. And uh, it's a tense one because the sun is conjunct Mars in your third house and it's forming a T-square with the moon in Aries in your ninth and Pluto in Capricorn in the sixth house. Um, you may have to travel at the drop of a hat for work at this point in time. Um, you may also have to postpone uh, travel at the drop of the hat, uh, maybe uh, as a result of something that's been happening at work, or maybe as a result of something that you need to take care of ASAP health wise. Um, it could also be a time when someone that you're working with decides to leave you hanging um, high and dry, I think is, uh, is the expression, because uh, they are no longer aligned with you in terms of beliefs, in terms of belief system, in terms of values, in terms of uh, their moral 
code. Uh, this can be a time when something ends very suddenly, very abruptly, also in, in a legal environment, uh, legally, judicially, you could be hearing news about something like this. I'm not necessarily very excited about the type of news that you are getting. I gotta put it out there. Uh, it could also be a time when you find out um, something about um, your studies. If you are a student, uh, you could be hearing the news uh, uh, connected with exams. Uh, something is buried and it's coming to the surface around this time and it's essentially creating more work for you my dear leos so i do want you to be prepared uh from the 23rd of october the sun moves into scorpio in your fourth house of home and from the 30th of october mars moves into scorpio until the 13th of december uh well essentially with the sun in scorpio and with uh, mars in scorpio i gotta say you are going to be putting a lot of energy time effort maybe even sweat uh, into uh, something connected with the home. I mean, Mars going through your fourth house is a fantastic time for renovation. Um, it is also a, uh, a fantastic time to uh, use your energy to solve something of a legal nature connected with the home, uh, my dear Leos. Now, if you are a Virgo sun or a Virgo rising, in October, four planets are going direct. Pluto and Capricorn in your fifth house on the 6th of October, uh, finally, finally making things click romantically uh, for you and maybe getting you out of uh, uh, a rut creatively if you have been feeling a little bit stuck creatively. Saturn in Aquarius in your sixth house on the 10th of October and Jupiter in Aquarius in your sixth house uh, on the 18th of October. Uh, if things have been quite slow in terms of you making progress at work, also if you have been experiencing delays maybe in feeling better health-wise or in overcoming something of a health-related nature, I would say after the, the 18th of October, you are cruising. This is the very, very last stretch. Uh, if you've been feeling like you're work-related projects are taking forever and a day to be completed and um, maybe co-workers aren't helping they're not being supportive uh, things are likely to feel a lot better after both of these planets go out of retrograde and it might also be time if you've been thinking of looking for new opportunities it might also be time to start looking again to start kind of like dispersing your antenna uh, and uh, see what's out there and last but not least gosh there's a lot of ambulances today i don't know if you can hear it on the on, i mean i've got my microphone quite close to me thank you for bearing with me thank you virgo for your patience um, last but not least, Mercury is going out of retrograde on the 18th of October in Libra in your second house. If you have uh, experienced delays work-wise um, in terms of getting paid, um, if you have also been having doubts about your skills, your talents, what you're good at, I would say that is likely to go away after the 18th of October. And maybe, maybe you actually felt inclined throughout the Mercury retrograde to um, brush up upon some, some of your existing skills. And that's also fantastic. I always recommend doing um, things that start with RE uh, during Mercury retrograde. Revisit, revise, review. RE, remember. Um, the first two days of October are a little bit trickier because Mercury is squaring Pluto and Capricorn in your fifth uh, house. Uh, there could be unexpected expenses uh, that you have to deal with connected with children or connected with a creative project. Um, a good day is the 4th of October with Mercury uh, in your second house trining Jupiter in Aquarius in the sixth house. This can be a day when you get paid and maybe um, you get paid uh, an outstanding sum of money that maybe you didn't even think um, you would receive right now on the 6th of October give or take three days before three days after we have a new moon in Libra in your second house it is conjunct Mars and Mars for you rules your eighth house of other people's money and your third house of communication Mercury is trining Jupiter at the time I like this for abundance um, it is a new beginning for you financially my dear Virgos you may decide to um, maybe take on 
a better paid project, a better paid job around this time. Um, it could be also a time when you uh, decide to take a different attitude when it comes to how you spend your money and what you spend your money on. You might decide to allocate some money, uh, for instance, to your um, to your education. Uh, you might decide to allocate some money, um, as the new moon is conjunct Mars, uh, to your... Uh, uh, investments in uh, in general so you might uh, think differently in terms of how you approach your budget around this time um, it also looks like it also looks like you are very nicely aspected to make more money around this time so ask for a raise uh, say yes to the better paying um, job why not why not um, on the 7th of October until the 5th of November Venus moves through Sagittarius in your fourth house Oh, this is beautiful. This is beautiful um, to spend time at home with family. It is very, very beautiful to maybe travel to meet with uh, family because Venus uh, rules your ninth house. Um, it is also beautiful maybe to <laughs> purchase nice things for the home uh, and maybe um, things or objects that uh, make you think of of a culture that you really have a strong affinity uh, towards. So I'm liking, I'm liking the transit of, uh, of Venus through your fourth house. The eighth and the ninth are trickier days because the sun and Mercury uh, are both conjunct Mars in uh, Libra in your second house. Explosive days for your wallet, if I may say. So um, also very careful uh, when it comes to fraud around this time. Check your check your bank balance, check your bank account, uh, check your wallet in general. I like the 13th and the 15th of October. Uh, on the 13th, Venus and Sagittarius is sextiling Saturn in Aquarius. It looks like um, you feel um, maybe I don't want to say entitled because entitled has such a negative connotation. I would say you feel proud enough of, uh, of what you have accomplished work-wise to also splurge on something home related. Um, and, and on the 15th, the sun in Libra in your second house is trining Jupiter in Aquarius in the sixth house. I like it because it looks like this is a day on the 15th when your talents are super, super appreciated by colleagues at work. Uh, on the 20th of October, give or take three days before three days after, we have a full moon in Aries in your eighth house. The sun is conjunct Mars in Libra in your second house, and it is forming a T-square with the moon in Aries in the eighth and Pluto in Capricorn in the fifth. Uh, careful in the days prior to the full moon from the 17th onwards. That's what I wrote in my notes. Folks, Virgos, uh, this is payday for probably someone else, <laughs> for the government maybe. Maybe this is the time when you need to pay your taxes. Uh, maybe this is a time when you need to pay, um, I don't know, like a credit that uh, is overdue. Um, maybe this is a time when you need to pay your debt. Uh, it could also be a time when you need to fork out a significant amount of money to uh, take care of an expense that maybe does not necessarily feel like it is your expense. It could be your partner's expense. It could be uh, your child's um, expense. Um, it could also be a time when you have a very powerful revelation in terms of uh, the topic of shared resources. Uh, essentially, you might decide that, uh, I don't know, you're no longer going to have a joint account, or you might decide that you actually want to have a joint account for um, emergencies, uh, for emergencies uh, that, uh, well, could come to your attention around the 20th of October. Um, you could be receiving uh, less than pleasant news around this time. Um, if you are waiting for news uh, about an investment, maybe something that was highly speculative, something that felt like gambling, it's probably not gonna be exactly what you wanted it to be. It could also be a time when you decide to uh, really draw a boundary when it comes to your resources versus your partner's uh, resources. And you could have a bit of a clash around that. On the 23rd of October, the sun moves into Scorpio in your third house for the next uh, four weeks, um, essentially um, making you a very social creature. Not that you're not a social creature, but your social agenda is going to be absolutely lit. You're going to have 
a lot of short distance traveling to do. Um, also from the 30th of October, Mars moves into this part of your chart until the 13th of December, uh, making your mind super active, my dear um, Virgos, and making you feel like this is the time for me to study something. This is when I want to perfect a skill. Uh, you could be uh, also feeling inclined to connect with people who uh, are um, very good at whatever it is that you're wanting to learn. It's like you feel this surge of motivation. It's like, yes, I want to understand this. I want to be good at this. I want to win at this. That's what Mars is going to do for you for a month and a half from the 30th of October onwards. And that is October for you, Virgos. My dear Libras, Libra suns, and Libra risings. In October, we obviously have four planets going out of retrograde. Pluto in Capricorn in your fourth house of home on the 6th of October, essentially unblocking something that was feeling stagnant in terms of your living situation in terms of your residence in terms of where you feel the most at home saturn in aquarius in your fifth house on the 10th of october and jupiter in aquarius in the same part of your chart on the 18th of october essentially giving you the feeling that you know where you're headed with a romantic relationship also also probably offering some clarity as to whether you've got what it takes to really commit over a long period of time to either a romantic partner or to a long-term creative project and last but not least mercury in libra in your first house is going out of retrograde on the 18th of october so certainly you've got 18 days <laughs> of Mercury retrograde in your own sign. Um, when Mercury is retrograde in um, someone's uh, first house, it may feel like it's harder to find your words. It may feel like you are a little bit misunderstood. Um, it may also feel like you are doubting a little bit where you are headed in life in general. You may also take uh, too much to heart, I would say, feedback from others, or maybe take it the wrong way. So something for you to be careful with. The first two days of October are a little bit tricky because Mercury is squaring Pluto and Capricorn in your f fourth house. So there could be uh, maybe a feeling of buried anger coming to the surface when it comes to a family member there could also be something that was festering in your home literally and only now you hear of it so i don't know it could be um a pipe that was blocked and all of a sudden it goes <laughs> when i struggle to find words i use signs um it could be that something i don't know like foul smelling comes to your attention in the home uh, also something that was kind of like maybe buried or hidden or forgotten in like the fridge or a closet or something you could also hear something that really <sighs> makes you worry about a family member uh, possibly health-wise on the 4th of October, we have a trine between Mercury in your first house and Jupiter in the fifth house. This is a beautiful, beautiful day uh, for creativity. It is a beautiful day to collaborate with others on a creative project. Um, Jupiter for you rules your third house and your sixth house. Um, it could also feel like a time when you um, are focused enough to give it your all to give your best to a creative project uh, and uh, you also want to go the extra mile to make it uh, look great to um, essentially um, ensure that it adheres to your very high standards on the 6th of october give or take three days before three days after we have a new moon in libra in your first house of uh, identity of uh, life direction of physical body it is conjunct mars and uh, mercury in your first house at the time is trining jupiter in the fifth house essentially it is a new beginning for you uh libras um that you are experiencing around the 6th of october but it's a new beginning that is integrating a relationship because it is conjunct 
Mars, the ruler of your seventh house of partnerships and committed uh, relationships. So you might be uh, really um, realizing, okay, my image is changing. My image has evolved as a result of integrating uh, within how I present myself to the world, um, a committed partnership. Uh, you might also realize that your life direction is about to take a new and very exciting and interesting uh, turn as a result of something that's been going on in your partnership sector. And I say you're feeling pretty loved up at this time. Um, I would say you're also feeling pretty optimistic about uh, your uh, romantic life and your romantic prospects. This could also be a time when you go out into the world uh, with a new image, with, uh, let's say, a new appearance, and it could be symbolically related to the topic of children in your life. Maybe this is when you go out into the world and announce I'm pregnant or my partner is pregnant and I'm going to become a parent. That is very possible, by the way. On the 7th of October until the 5th of November, Venus goes through Sagittarius in your third house. It is a beautiful, beautiful time to uh, focus on a, a topic that you're passionate about, to read about it, to learn more about it. It is also a fantastic time for networking, my dear uh, Libras. And and um, I would also say it is a good time to reconnect with previous clients or previous people who you have collaborated with. Um, in terms of sales and purchases. The 8th and the 9th of October are, again, trickier days because the Sun and Mercury are going to conjunct Mars and Libra in your first house. Um, this could be, um, well, the 8th and the 9th could be days when you could cut yourself, when you could hurt yourself. Um, well, I hope not. I certainly hope not. But Try to be a little bit more careful. Uh, try not to rush into things. Um, there are days when you could be feeling frustrated and days when you could be feeling like everyone is moving slower than you would like them to move. On the 13th of October, we have a sextile between Venus and Saturn in your uh, fifth house. Uh, I like this because it looks like you are communicating beautifully either with a romantic partner or with... Um, a child, if you do have children, it's also a really good day to go out on a date. And on the 15th of October, the sun in your first house is trining Jupiter in Aquarius in your fifth house. You're feeling very um, optimistic. Um, you're feeling very um, cheerful about where your life is headed as a result of what's going on in your romantic life, my dear uh, Libras. On the 20th of October, we have a full moon in Aries, uh, give or take three days before, three days after. Uh, the sun is conjunct Mars in your first house. Uh, it is forming a T-square, which is a tense aspect, with the moon in uh, the seventh house and Pluto and Capricorn in the fourth house. Okay, so this is a time of commitment for you Libras, but it could be happening a little bit faster or um, a little bit uh, sooner than you actually thought it would. Uh, this is a time when you probably have to take a very radical decision about where you're going to live uh, together with a partner. You could have to take um, um, a very radical decision, maybe in terms of moving in with a partner. Um, it could also be a time when you feel maybe a little bit forced to commit as a result of something that's been going on behind the scenes that neither of you um, knew of. It can also be a time when you announce to your family, maybe possibly, the fact that you are committed um, to a uh, to a partner. Um, I don't want to. I really don't want to bring this too much to your attention, but uh, there could also be uh, something of a less pleasant nature that brings you and a partner closer together. Maybe someone that is suffering, a parent that is suffering, for instance. Maybe. Uh, I don't know, uh, someone getting kicked out of their house. I don't know, their lease isn't being renewed and all of a sudden it's like, okay, so what does that mean? Does that mean that we are moving in together for good? It could be that. It absolutely could be that, my dear Libras. On the 23rd of October, the sun also moves into Scorpio in your third house. Your mind becomes incredibly active and you're all go, 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 catching up with people. Um, uh, being on the road, uh, maybe planning short distance trips. And from the 30th of October, um, oh, my apologies, my apologies, my apologies, my apologies, please. I take all of that back. 
in in uh, in Mercury retrograde fashion, I take all of that back. What I said about the Sun moving into Scorpio in your third house, it's actually moving into Scorpio in your second house um, from the twenty third of October for four weeks, uh, my dear Libras. Please forgive forgive this uh, this old uh, poor uh, soul who made a typo in classic Mercury retrograde manner. Uh, from the 23rd of October, the sun moves into Scorpio in your second house of income uh, for the next four weeks, essentially illuminating the topic of finances for you. It may feel like your attention goes into the area of finances um, a great deal. It may feel like um, your your mind is kind of like working in overdrive when it comes to um, making plans for the future financially because the sun rules your 11th house of long-term plans for the future. And as Mars also moves into this part of your chart on the 30th of October until the 13th of December, um, you are going to be all hustle, 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 super motivated to make more money. Uh, also uh, probably having um, an increased amount of expenses to deal with. But at the same time, you also feel energized to bring more money into your life. Forgive me once again, Libras, for making that mistake. It's a good thing that I realized it. <laughs> My dear Scorpios, Scorpio suns and Scorpio risings, uh, October, what does this look like for you? Well, we've got a lot of 12th house activation for you. So the 12th house is connected with introspection, with isolation, with spending time alone. Um, it is the house of meditation. It is also a mental health house. We have four planets going direct. Pluto and Capricorn in your third house on the 6th of October. Um, finally, something seems to be getting solved when it comes to a sale, when it comes to a purchase, uh, also when it comes to anything that you might be studying, my dear Scorpios. Um, it may feel like you are making progress. On the 10th of October, uh, Saturn goes out of retrograde in your fourth house in uh, Aquarius. And on the 18th of October, Jupiter goes out of retrograde in the same part of your chart. And Mercury uh, in uh, Libra uh, on the 18th of October. So after the 18th of October, I would say um, it may feel like things are starting to settle in your home because you have had a lot of focus and maybe a lot of shifts and changes happening in your home and family life. And Mercury um, goes out of retrograde in your 12th house. Let's say allowing you to sleep a little bit better and also putting a bit of a damper upon maybe some, let's say darker thoughts that you may have had uh, Scorpio or um, let's say, um, less than pleasant maybe uh, dreams let's uh, let's put it this way you seem to have been thinking a great deal about crisis uh, about transformation maybe about death with mercury in that part of your um, in that part of your chart the first two days of october are um not the easiest because we have a square between mercury in your 12th house and pluto in the third house uh you could be thinking maybe of someone that you lost you could be um dealing with feelings of grief maybe possibly uh, there can also be this feeling of, of of being alone and of being misunderstood uh, in terms of what is going on through your head my dear um, my dear scorpios luckily this does not last for that long on the 4th of October, we have a harmonious aspect between Mercury in the 12th house and Jupiter in Aquarius in the 4th house. So it looks like you've got a family member coming into the rescue, uh, maybe helping you overcome some of your darker thoughts. Um, also, there could be maybe some sort of solution that is brought to uh, the table by um, a family member connected with something that you've been, um, let's say, playing in your head over and over and over again. And it's like, ah. Oh, Finally, someone from the outside is helping me get over this. On the 6th of October, give or take three days before three days after, we have a new moon happening in Libra in your 12th house. It is exactly conjunct Mars. Mars is your um, ruler and it is also the ruler of your 6th house. And um, Mercury in your 12th house is trining Jupiter in the 4th house. Um, it's, a, it's a new beginning for you, my dear Scorpios, on a... Um, on a spiritual level, I would say, on a mental health level, you may be feeling inspired, you may be feeling motivated to treat this part of your life, this 
private part of your life differently. Maybe to start off, uh, let's say, a new routine on a spiritual level. Uh, maybe to try out a different spiritual practice. Um, something that um, makes you feel more at ease and more at peace within the privacy of your uh, home. And I would certainly recommend that you do this. And I would also recommend bring someone to the someone into your uh, routine, maybe uh, enroll a family member. Why not? You don't have to go through it all alone. It can also feel like a time when something is being lifted off your shoulders. Um, maybe a weight is being lifted off your shoulders because you share something that's been uh, eating at you in private. You share it with a family member. And would you look at that? They are here to support you. Um, from the 7th of October until the 5th of November, Venus moves through Sagittarius in your second house. Okay, this is a fantastic time to make money. It is also a time when your talents are being really appreciated, and it is a time to... Um, well, if you can, to ask for more money, uh, to uh, learn to value and to appreciate uh, yourself, uh, yourself better. It is also a time when you are very nicely aspected to spend money on what brings you a sense of joy and also on what you consider to be valuable and worthy. Very Sagittarian in nature, I would say traveling and education, my dear Scorpios. Now, uh, on the 8th, 9th of October, uh, we have a bit of a, well, uh, tricky aspect in the sky, the Sun and Mercury are conjunct Mars in uh, Libra in your 12th house. Uh, it could be a time, maybe uh, a couple of days when you don't necessarily uh, dream um, the, the most soothing of dreams, uh, when you maybe have some insomnia. Um, it could also be a time when you beat yourself up essentially and when you tend to have a very negative way of thinking towards yourself i uh, I, I would say i do like however the 13th and the 15th of october uh, on the 13th venus in the second house is sex selling saturn and aquarius in your fourth house um it looks like you're making money from home uh, on this day or uh, you feel um, good enough uh, you feel uh, positive enough to spend on um let's say an expensive purchase for the home. It's like an investment for the home, I, I would say. And on the 15th of October, the sun in the 12th house is trining Jupiter in the fourth house. Whatever you've been racking your brains in private about, um, whatever you've been maybe beating yourself up uh, in private about, um, is once again something that maybe a family member comes to the rescue and says, have you thought of it this way? Or have you looked at the situation this way? Um, it does not hurt to share what you are going through. Share your struggles, my dear Scorpios, because you do not have to deal with all of it on your own. Um, something to really remember. And on the 20th of October, give or take three days before, three days after, you have a full moon uh, triggering your sixth house, 12th house axis. It's, um, it's an intense one because the sun in Libra is conjunct uh, Mars in Libra in your 12th house. It is uh, forming a T-square with the moon in Aries in the sixth house and Pluto in Capricorn in the third house. It can be a time when you get some sort of di diagnosis health-wise if you have been waiting for it. Um, it could also be a time when uh, you finally muster up the courage to speak uh, to the outside world about something that you have been um, dealing with, that something that you have been um, battling with in private. And I would certainly recommend that you do so because it can be very cathartic. Uh, it can also be a time when you experience um, some sort of acutization of a health-related issue. It could be a mental health-related issue. It could be a physical health issue. But the T-square... Um, is uh, coming together in an apex to Pluto and Capricorn in the third house. Um, finding the words to verbalize it and to articulate um, what you're going through definitely seems to help. Um, I would also say this can be a time when something that uh, happens maybe unexpectedly at work uh, tips you over and you're like, no, enough is enough. I need to uh, reestablish 
my boundaries, I need to reassert my boundaries, and it is a time to reassert your boundaries. It is a time to um, break the silence, as they um, as they say. It could be a time when something really comes to the surface, maybe that you've been dealing with, maybe you were afraid to speak about it, but someone else brings it to your attention, and all of a sudden there is a deluge of, I've been going through this, I'm not happy with this, I've been going through this as well. And again, it can feel very freeing it can feel very cathartic because you are not alone in it any longer it could also be a time when you decide you know what i have had enough of this working environment goodbye sayonara and see you never and i would not blame you if that were the case on the 23rd of october the sun moves into your first house essentially bringing you more energy making you feel more vitalized for the next four weeks and from the 30th of october mars moves into your first house until the 13th of december you are like all systems go you are embodying the warrior the fighter the boss and when mars is in our first house it's always a good idea to um let out some steam through physical exercise careful not to rush and to hurt yourself because otherwise it's like we've got this surge of uh, energy and we can be very impatient and uh, also lose it with people around us. My Sagittarius uh, suns and Sagittarius rising friends, um, what does October look like for you? Well, there is going to be a lot of energy concentrated in your 11th house still. A lot is going on in uh, Libra at the 11th house of friends, groups of people, long-term plans, goals, dreams. And also we have four planets going direct. Pluto and Capricorn in your second house of income on the 6th of October. After the 6th of October, you may literally feel like something is getting unblocked in the area of income for you. Um, or it may feel like you are suddenly um, overcoming something that was holding you back from fulfilling your full potential financially. On the 10th of October, Saturn in Aquarius goes out of retrograde in the third house and Jupiter goes out of retrograde in the same part of your chart to, on the 18th of October. If you've been having a feeling of uh, things being slow, um, unproductive when it came to uh, traveling, short distance traveling, when it came to sales, when it came to purchases, when it came to filling in paperwork, wait for these two planets to go out of retrograde and things are starting to get productive once again. Also, if your efforts um, to network have been, I don't know, <laughs> falling short of your expectations, once again, um, wait for uh, these two planets to go out of retrograde and it might feel like things are finally coming together. And Mercury goes out of retrograde in your 11th house on the 18th of October. Um, essentially, until the 18th of October, you may reconnect with uh, old friends. Uh, you may um, have to revisit your um, goals and your objectives. Uh, you may also have to revisit some of the collaborations that you had in mind in order to make your long-term plans and objectives happen. And until the 18th of October when Mercury goes out of retrograde. The first two days of October um, are a little bit uh, difficult because Mercury is squaring Pluto and Capricorn in your second house. Essentially, uh, there could be some financial issues that are keeping you from fulfilling one of your long-term plans. You could also be having heated conversations with friends or with collaborators when it comes to money. Um, I see a very beautiful, beautiful day to collaborate on the 4th of October with Mercury and Libra in your 11th house, trining Jupiter in Aquarius in your third house. This is also a great day to be on the road. It is also a great day to um, maybe fix your car or something, uh, something like that. It could be a great day when you um, close a sale or close a deal with an old client because Mercury is still retrograde. On the 6th of October, give or take three days before three days after, we have a new moon in Libra in your 11th house of long-term plans, goals, and dreams, my dear Sagittarius. Uh, Mercury is trining Jupiter at the time, and uh, I gotta say, I am feeling super excited because essentially this is a time when you come together, probably with a wider group of people, and say, let's make something happen. It could be one of your older plans. It could be something like a project that you had in mind a while back, but now you find the perfect team. It could also be that you are brought together with a group of people that you really appreciate to work on something big. And um, it may be something that 
was started a while back, but now you're being brought in and it feels like, yes, the dream team is complete. Uh, it could also be like a time when you feel like you have reunited with a group of people that you strongly, strongly resonate with, that you have a very strong um, intellectual connection with. On the 7th of October until the 5th of November, Venus moves through Sagittarius in your first house, uh, making you super attractive, super charming, more charming than usual. Uh, it may feel like everyone and their mother wants to go out with you, especially if you're single. I suppose that is a fantastic thing. It is a great time to take care of your body. It's a great time to renew your wardrobe, to get a haircut, uh, to uh, make yourself even more uh, aesthetically pleasing than you are already, my dear uh, Sagittarians. Um, 8th and 9th of uh, October can be explosive days in terms of having maybe a fight or a quarrel with uh, a friend. I would um, I would say very, very careful there. There could be something uh, that comes out of the shadows to bite you. Or it could be that someone is really having a bad day at home and they take it out on you and you're like, what on earth? What is going on? Where is this coming from? I like the 13th and the 15th. On the 13th, we have uh, Venus in your first house, sex selling Saturn and Aquarius in the third house. It is a great day to sign an older contract. Why do I say older? <laughs> maybe something that was delayed because Mercury is still in retrograde um, or to sell something that uh, you've been wanting to sell for quite some time. And on the 15th of October, the sun in your 11th house is training Jupiter in the third house. Um, it feels like together with your community together with your friends. Um, you are having some very productive conversations about something that gets you super excited about the future. <laughs> And on the 20th of October, give or take three days before, three days after, you have a full moon in Aries in your fifth house, forming a T-square with Pluto in Capricorn in the second house. Um, the sun uh, is conjunct Mars and Libra in the 11th house. Okay, so this can be a time when uh, you complete a creative project uh, together with a group of people, but uh, maybe it doesn't necessarily look exactly the way that you wanted it to look, or maybe you decide to um, get out of the project because you're not being paid as much as you'd like to get uh, paid. It can also be a time when it feels like you're having a little bit of a face-off with your friends, or at least with a friend, um, who may not necessarily agree with what you are doing in terms of how you spend your money or in terms of uh, where you're headed um, romantically in life. Uh, you could also have a little bit of a face-off as a result of some of the choices that you have been making romantically or as a result of some of the choices that you've been making in terms of creative projects that you could be uh, engaged in. It can also be a time when you decide to exit uh, a certain circle of people or say goodbye to a friend um, because you are deciding to prioritize um, your children, if you have children, or your romantic life. On the 23rd of October, the sun moves into Scorpio in your 12th house, essentially for the next four weeks. Um, I would say it is time for you to slow down. It is time for you to maybe focus more on your private um, life. And from the 30th of October, Mars moves into Scorpio in this part of your chart until the 13th of December. Mars rules your fifth house and your um, 12th house. <sighs> I gotta say, something's keeping you up at night, pretty much until the middle of December, and it's telling you, um, you gotta do something about this, you gotta do something about this, you have to take uh, the bull by the horns, uh, you can't allow things to sit as they are. For instance, you could be losing sleep over something that is happening in uh, the life of your children or child, if you do have children, you could be feeling a little bit overwhelmed at the same time. It's like, am I making the right choice? Uh, did I do the right thing? Maybe taking them away from uh, a certain group of friends, maybe moving them away from school. Um, it can be a very active time. Um, let's say when you sleep with Mars in the, um, in the 12th, uh, in the 12th house, it could also be a time when uh, you are feeling maybe some old challenges from a mental health perspective coming back to your attention. Don't read too much into it, but also don't leave them unaddressed. I mean, it does not help to bury things under the rug and hope for the best and say, 
yeah, who cares? It's all gonna be fine. Um, no, it, there is something from the shadows coming back into your attention, into your conscious attention, uh, or maybe coming back to your attention through dreams that you need to address, my, uh, my dear um, uh, Sagittarius. Now, if you are a Capricorn sun or a Capricorn rising, what does October have in store for you? Well, a lot of emphasis is uh, being placed on your 10th house of career, my dear uh, Capricorns. We've got a lot of uh, Libra activation and Libra governs your 10th house of career. Obviously, you still have Mercury retrograde in Libra until the 18th of October. So communication with bosses, with figures of authority, uh, communication in, in a public environment might not necessarily be going top notch until the 18th of October, even though you do have some, some good days. The 4th of October is a great day. Uh, also, um, let's see, let's see, let's see. The 15th of October uh, is also a great day uh, in terms of um, you being applauded and appreciated uh, work-wise. Um, it can be a time when you reconnect a great deal until the 18th of October with old clients. It could also be a time when you receive, until the 18th of October, an opportunity to work with someone who you've worked with in the past. Pluto goes direct in your first house on the 6th of October, essentially making you feel like you know where you're headed in terms of life direction, because you might have been feeling a, a bit stuck and a little bit uh, down in the dumps. Uh, Saturn goes out of retrograde on the 10th of October in your second house and Jupiter on the 18th. If there has been a slowing down of the amount of money <laughs> that... Uh, a slowing down of the amount of money. No, uh, a decrease in the amount of money that you've been making uh, in, in the past few months. Um, if you have been feeling maybe um, a little bit doubtful when it came to your talents, when it came to pitching what you're good at, um, things will take a turn for the better, I would say, after both Saturn and Jupiter are out of retrograde. So after the 10th and the 18th of October, um, it may also feel like some sort of funds are being unblocked for you uh, financially, um, especially after the 18th. And uh, Mercury, as I said, goes out of retrograde on the 18th of October as well. The first two days of October, we have a square between Mercury and Libra in your uh, 10th house and Pluto and Capricorn in the first house. You are probably feeling unappreciated uh, by uh, a boss around this time, or you are feeling like um, you really have to dilute who you are uh, in order to make them feel comfortable, which is certainly a very annoying thing to do, uh, Capricorns, and I empathize with you if you have to do that. On the 4th of October, however, as I said, we have a good day because Mercury is harmoniously aspecting Jupiter in your second house. Uh, on the 6th of October, give or take three days before, three days after, we have a new moon in Libra in your 10th house of career, uh, exactly conjunct Mars. Let's see. Mars for you rules your fourth house and your 11th house. Oh my days. I like this Capricorns. Uh, this is a time when you could be receiving uh, a promotion or an opportunity to step up the ladder career wise from someone that you've worked with in the past. And it may be your dream job, or it could be an old dream that you had professionally that now seems to be, um, about to take shape. It seems to be uh, possible. It is taking shape in your life. Uh, certainly, this is the only new moon that you have in your 10th house of career this year. So my recommendation is, if you are being given the opportunity to step up the ladder career-wise, take it, even if it is something that is coming from your past, even if it is something that um, is coming from someone that you worked with uh, before, and maybe, I don't know, uh, I, I know people have a rule, uh, I don't wanna go back to working where I have been working, etc., etc. Um, it does look like it's going to be worth your time uh, financially also because Mercury in the 10th house is trining Jupiter in the second house. It's almost like you can't say no to this. Uh, more money, more responsibility, more exposure, uh, higher status. It's looking good. Uh, on the 7th of October uh, until the 5th of November, Venus moves through Sagittarius in your 12th house. Okay, so uh, I like this. Why? Because it does create a very romantic atmosphere behind the scenes. Uh, maybe you are experiencing, uh, let's say, an increase in romantic energy um, 
with your partner or maybe you're doing something with your partner that feels a little bit taboo, a little bit forbidden, and it's also very exciting at the same time. Uh, Venus rules your fifth house. Um, certainly, Venus also rules your 10th house of career, so you could be receiving that sort of behind the scenes offer that I've been uh, talking about and maybe considering it and not sharing it straight away with uh, the outside uh, world. On the 8th and the 9th of October, uh, the Sun is conjunct uh, Mars in Libra in the 10th house, Mercury also. Uh, these are explosive days. Uh, someone at your work is really getting on your nerves and you're also feeling very motivated to make a move at this time. It's like, I want to get out of here or I want to be in charge or I want to stop taking guidance from someone that is not as um, proficient as I am. On the 13th of October, we have a harmonious aspect between Venus in the 12th house and Saturn in your second house. Uh, and uh, on the 15th of October, uh, the Sun in Libra in your 10th house is trining Jupiter in Aquarius in the second house. Okay, so this is when I probably see you maybe uh, accepting <laughs> this sort of uh, professional um, offer and uh, really starting to maybe make plans for the future with the extra money that is coming your, uh, your way. Or it could be a time when you uh, negotiate with your current employer and you're like, hey, I've got a counter offer or I've got an offer, not a counter offer. Uh, are you going to hit me with a counter um, offer? It, it could also be a period between the 13th and the 15th of October when you work on something behind the scenes that uh, brings an increase um, to your income, but it's not necessarily something that you want to shout about from the rooftops. On the 20th of October, give or take three days before three days after, we have a full moon in Aries in your fourth house of home, triggering your fourth house, tenth house axis. It's forming a T-square with Pluto in uh, Capricorn in your first house. Um, it is explosive no matter how we look at it. Uh, whatever is going on in your home uh, environment, it does seem to be uh, affecting very strongly also your, um, your career, your status, and your reputation, um, and also the other way around. Whatever you decide career-wise, it also seems to be affecting your family life. Uh, you could have something to announce to the rest of the world about uh, something coming to, uh, to a close family-wise. For instance, someone might announce that they are getting divorced or someone might announce that um, they are deciding to, I don't know, uh, move to a different country with their partner. That is all very possible. You could be leaving behind a home around this time, my dear Capricorns, or you could be saying goodbye to uh, someone or something that was part of your home and family life. And part of you is heartbroken, but also part of you is uh, super relieved. It's like I can finally move on with my life. From the 23rd of October, the sun moves into uh, Scorpio in your 11th house, uh, illuminating your uh, long-term plans for the future for the next four weeks, uh, allowing you essentially to make plans for the future uh, for the next four weeks, because now you know where you um, where you stand, as, uh, as they say. And last but not least, from the 30th of October until the 13th of December, Mars moves into Scorpio as well, essentially giving you a lot of energy, a lot of stamina to make uh, your plans for the future happen. Uh, Mars for you, my dear Capricorns, rules your fourth house. So you seem to have new plans in terms of your living situation. You could be literally planning to move or taking care of the move or looking for a new home or um, redefining what your future is going to look like home and family uh, wise, uh, dear, uh, dear Capricorns. My Aquarius brothers and sisters, what does October look like for us? Well, there is still a lot of emphasis uh, on our ninth house of foreign lands, of foreign countries, of cross-cultural affairs, of uh, legal matters, of um, higher education, of uh, academia. We have also four planets going direct. Um, I'm very excited about all of them. Pluto is going direct in uh, Capricorn in our 12th house on the 6th of October. Essentially, this can correlate with some sort of um, spiritual breakthrough, my dear Aquarius. Uh, 
Then Saturn is going out of retrograde on the 10th of October in our first house and Jupiter on the 18th also in our first house. So if you may uh, have felt sluggish, if you felt um, maybe slow, if you have been feeling like you don't know exactly what you're doing with yourself, where you're headed in life, uh, what you should be focusing on next, what you should be directing your attention and your efforts uh, towards in terms of your self-development, in terms of your growth. Aquarius, it does look like um, it's going to become clearer after the 18th of October. And Mercury also goes retrograde in our ninth house on the 18th. So in the first three weeks of, uh, of October, uh, my dear Aquarians, we can experience all sorts of delays and miscommunication and all sorts of... Uh, Issues that we need to revisit when it comes to our studies, when it comes to legal matters, when it comes maybe to applying for a visa or maybe for um, for, a, for a certificate, for a diploma, for a course. There's also the possibility that you, Aquarius, if you, let's say, did not complete your studies or if you did not get your um, diploma or your certificate of completion, you may feel inclined to go get it when Mercury is retrograde in your ninth house. So that is a positive effect of Mercury retrograde. The first two days of October are a little bit trickier because Mercury uh, is squaring Pluto in your 12th house. So there could be unexpected obstacles that you encounter in your travels also unexpected obstacles that you encounter maybe um, if you are running any sort of marketing campaign or if you are running any sort of advertising uh, campaign uh, there could also be something that comes up of a legal nature that uh, puts uh, you in a tight spot maybe in terms of traveling i don't know i'm thinking new restrictions or a new rule for traveling something like that. It would not surprise me because certainly there have been all sorts of uh, changes of this nature this year. On the 4th of October, we have a beautiful aspect between Mercury in the ninth house and Jupiter in Aquarius in your first house. So if uh, you have been experiencing difficulties in terms of traveling or in terms of studying, you seem to be finding a solution or you seem to be finding someone that is willing to help. On the 6th of October, give or take three days before, three days after, you have a new moon in your ninth house, exactly conjunct Mars. Now, for you, Aquarius, Mars rules your third house and your tenth house. Um, this is probably a new beginning for you in terms of studying, uh, in terms of broadening your horizons, in terms of learning, um, something that can help you advanced career-wise. You could also be making, let's say, um, an announcement uh, regarding your career at this time. Um, the fact that you plan to, for instance, uh, um, go back to school, the fact that you plan maybe to get your master's uh, degree around, uh, around this time. It could also be a time when uh, you announce to the wider world maybe maybe something connected with relocation um, and uh, something that is having a positive impact both on your direction in life in general but also upon your career path it can be a time when you receive uh, good news when it comes to traveling uh, it can also be a time when you make uh, plans to travel my dear aquarius now on the 7th of october until the 5th of november venus moves into sagittarius in your 11th house this is a great great time to catch up with friends to um, reconnect with old friends to collaborate with friends to uh, gravitate towards like-minded individuals uh, to welcome to host friends at uh, at home or or to travel to meet with friends into their homes for instance instance. The 8th and the 9th of October are a bit more difficult days because we have um, a Sun, um, Mercury, Mars conjunction in your ninth house. Essentially what could happen is uh, something sudden, something abrupt uh, may require your attention when it comes to your plans to travel. There's also maybe uh, the possibility of you having to move fast if you do want to secure a spot upon uh, 
uh, <laughs> I don't know, the next uh, uh, study spaceship. Uh, if you do want to secure a spot um, on, on a course, you might have to move faster than you had initially planned to move. Uh, it could also be a time, these two days could be days when you feel like you really have to defend your belief system in front of others, um, where you have to maybe take a stance, like a moral stance in front of others. I like the 13th and the 15th of October. Uh, on the 13th, Venus and Sagittarius is sextiling Saturn and Aquarius in the first house. Uh, you seem to be receiving support from uh, friends or from like-minded individuals uh, for one of your um, personal um, growth, uh, self-development uh, goals. On the 15th of October, the sun in the ninth house is trining uh, Jupiter and Aquarius in the first house. Great news connected with your travels and also connected with your studies, my dear um, Aquarius. This could also be a time when you make a payment and you're feeling super proud uh, towards uh, your uh, education. The, on the 20th of October, give or take three days before three days after, we have a full moon in Aries. It is triggering your third house, ninth house axis. There's a T-square in the sky between uh, the Sun in Libra um, conjunct Mars in the ninth house, uh, the Moon in your third house, and Pluto in your twelfth house. Now, for you, Aquarius, the Moon rules your sixth house. Essentially, um, you might need to give up on something that you are doing work-wise in order to pursue this this plan of, of education that you have you may also you may also feel all of a sudden very overwhelmed mentally um with the plans that you have been making uh, from an educational perspective there could also be uh something that comes from the shadows and throws a spanner into the works when it comes to your plans to travel and also when it comes to your plans to study. Um, maybe you realize, oh my gosh, I can't go study straight away or I can't, uh, I can't enroll upon this course because I haven't completed another course that was mandatory and that I did not know about. It could also be a time, I gotta tell you, when you bid goodbye to your car or to a mode of transportation. If you have siblings, then a sibling could also announce you something very, very suddenly, very unexpectedly, and it might require you to travel in order to maybe offer support to them, my dear Aquarius. Uh, on the 23rd of October, the sun moves into Scorpio in your 10th house of career, essentially illuminating your career for the next uh, four weeks. Um, it may feel like that's where you need to place your uh, attention. It may also feel like everyone else is giving you a lot of attention in the next uh, four weeks from the 23rd onwards. Uh, because of what you have been doing so far or because of what you have achieved so far career-wise. And from the 30th of October, Mars moves into Scorpio in your 10th house of career until the 13th of December. This is the time for you to hustle. It is a time to um, promote yourself. It is a time to uh, pitch your services to the wider uh, world. If you have been looking to maybe secure a new job, it is certainly a time to um, really put energy into securing a, a higher up position, uh, securing a new opportunity for you career-wise. Um, it can also be a time when you experience power clashes with people in positions of authority and you might be thinking, what am I doing here? I should be in charge. Now, if you are a Pisces sun or a Pisces rising, for you, my dear Pisces, October uh, is going to revolve a great deal around the topic of shared resources, um, other people's money, money that you share with others, money that you share with a spouse, for instance, mother, uh, mother, <laughs> no, no mother, <laughs> just partner, uh, money that you share uh, with uh, maybe the bank, or money that you need from the bank, or um, let's say an external investment that you may need in your life, or loans, or taxes. These are the keywords that will probably be revolving in your head throughout the month of October, most of October, my dear um, Pisces. 
Four planets are going direct in October. Uh, Pluto in your 11th house on the 6th of October, essentially um, giving you this uh, boost of energy to um, focus on one of your long-term plans. Finally, uh, Saturn uh, in your uh, 12th house on uh, the 10th of October and Jupiter as well in your, uh, in your 12th house on the 18th of October. After the 18th of October, it may feel like you are finally about to overcome maybe some sort of uh, private matter that you've been dealing with. It could be something connected with um, your physical body. It could be something connected with your mental health. It could also be something that you've been dealing with privately uh, related to your career. Maybe something's been on pause career-wise for you and you've been thinking about it a lot behind closed doors and all of a sudden it's like boom it's it's starting to move forward once again the first two days of october are trickier in terms of communication there can actually be instances of uh, conflict of verbal conflict between you and uh, friends based on the different values that you've got. Uh, you may actually completely disagree with friends um, and they might disagree with your values and with uh, the stance that you decide to take about um, a topic connected with the future, uh, something that has to do with principles. You may also be feeling a little bit betrayed or maybe excluded out of um, activities that friends do together and it might be the very last straw that broke the camel's back and you might decide, okay, I'm cutting you out of my life because this is not what friends do. I like the 4th of October because Mercury in the ninth house, uh, my apologies, Mercury in your um, eighth house is trining Jupiter in Aquarius in your 12th house. So you could say that uh, you're making peace maybe with some sort of a radical decision that you have taken in your, in your life. Uh, something that is helping you overcome some sort of personal crisis. On the 6th of October, give or take three days before, three days after, we have a new moon in Libra in your eighth house. Exactly conjunct Mars, my dear Pisces. Mars rules your second house and your ninth house. Um, I gotta say, this is a time when you could be receiving the green light for a mortgage, for an external investment, for a loan. Um, you are feeling positive, you're feeling super optimistic. It may have felt like it, it took forever and a day to get this green light, but it is allowing you to move forward with your life. It could also be a time when you decide to um, uh, start investing into something that maybe you thought of investing in a while back, but the time just never felt right. Uh, I would say if you do plan on investing in something, do it because uh, Mercury at the time of this uh, new moon is in a harmonious aspect to Jupiter and Jupiter is the planet of abundance. On the 7th of October until the 5th of November, we have Venus moving through Sagittarius in your 10th house of career. Okay, so um, I like this because you are everyone's sweetheart uh, career-wise. Um, you are appreciated by bosses. You are appreciated by people in positions of power. Uh, you are receiving uh, positive attention and positive exposure. And it does seem to be building up your career very nicely, this sort of a positive attention that you are getting. How? Well, you've got a solar eclipse coming up, my dear Pisces, in December, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. In your 10th house of career, um, it is a time to really take advantage of the fact that you are seen in a fantastic light and to get yourself out there, to go pitching, to um, um, take the floor in, in presentations, to come up with ideas and brainstorming uh, sessions do it because you're probably going to receive the A-OK. -okay. Um, on the 8th and the 9th of October, uh, there can be um, some tension uh, in, your, um, in your partnership sector um, as a result of maybe having different plans connected with shared resources. It could also be a time when you have to move really fast and when you have to put a great deal of energy into securing uh, these uh, external funds, this loan, this mortgage. 
I like the 13th and the 15th of October. On the 13th, uh, you are very nicely aspected um, with Venus in the 10th house, sex selling Saturn and Aquarius in your 12th house. What you are um, sharing with the public, what you are sharing in a, in a career environment is probably getting the attention of someone who has a lot of clout, a lot of power, but who likes to stay maybe behind the scenes. And on the 15th of October, um, the sun in Libra in your eighth house is trining Jupiter and Aquarius in the 12th house. This could be a time maybe when your partner receives really good news connected with their own financial situation and you as a couple are doing a lot better. It can also be a time uh, when you uh, reap uh, some sort of uh, rewards upon existing investments when you are taking your profit, my dear Pisces, as they say. On the 20th of October, give or take uh, three days before, three days after, we have a full moon in your second house of income. Um, it is uh, forming a tense aspect with um, Pluto and Capricorn in the 11th house. So we have a T-square in the sky between the Sun conjunct Mars in the 8th house, uh, the Moon in the 2nd house, and Pluto and Capricorn in the 11th house. Uh, this is a time when Together with a partner, you probably have to decide how you are going to spend shared resources. You may also feel a little bit betrayed or slapped in the face by the fact that maybe a partner has a hidden agenda or maybe they had a different plan that they did not tell you about and it is completely taking you aback and you're like, okay, but what happens with my money or what happens with our plans? Uh, you might need to take some very radical um, decisions when it comes to shared resources around this time, whether you uh, sign up for um, pooling resources together with a partner or whether you decide to split them apart uh, or or whether this is the time when you actually have to say goodbye to an existing source of income so that you can make room for um, let's say maybe a project or a type of work where you collaborate with someone else together but at the same time you're feeling a little bit unsure because it, it's making you feel like you're giving up a bit upon your um, financial independence. So something to think about very, 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 very carefully because it's probably going to impact your um, future for the long run, my dear Pisces. And on the 23rd of October, the sun moves into Scorpio in your ninth house for the next uh, four weeks, illuminating your uh, long distance travel sector, probably uh, having you make plans for, um, for travels. And from the 30th of October until the 13th of December, Mars moves through your ninth house, um, essentially asking you to put a great deal of energy and effort and time and stamina into uh, traveling, into studies, and also into legal matters. It may feel like legal, judicial matters are eating up a lot of your energy for a month and a half between the 30th of October and the 13th of December. This is October, my lovelies. Thank you for joining. Thank you for uh, for bearing with me. My apologies if I have uh, sometimes uh, not found the right words or if I've said something wrong. Libra, I'm looking at you. Um, don't forget, if you want to work with me, you can find me on writteninthestars-astrology.com. That is my website. In the services section, you can find the various types of readings that I offer. You can also follow me on Instagram at R-U-X unbelievable in one word, Rux unbelievable. And please folks, uh, share what is going on in your life in October because uh, I, I know everyone likes to read the comments. I see people having interactions in the comments. I read the comments myself and it's actually uh, what astrology is about, ref reflecting life and sharing life. Oh my gosh, like <laughs> you can probably tell that I'm medicated and uh, doing philosophy at this very uh, late hour. Thank you once again for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.